Hey, what's going on? It's Berkeley Moses here, solid as a b-ball. Um, lucky to be joined by Malcolm Glanville, guard from the University of Guelph, Ontario. Uh, Malcolm, thanks for joining us. No problem, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Um, so you want to just like, um, introduce yourself and kind of tell people um, who you are, senior guard at um, Guelph University? Yeah, as you said, uh, as my introduction, my name is Malcolm Glanville. I'm a senior guard at the University of Guelph. And I've been playing at the University of Guelph since 2018, um, after I transferred from my Division II school down south. Yeah, we talked a bit about your um, your journey. You want to expand a bit on how you ended up at the um, University of Guelph? Yeah, so yeah, my first year, like out of high school, I signed to a NCAA Division II school called Oklahoma Panhandle State uh, University. We were in the second best uh, D2 conference in the nation, and most of my games were in Texas, like Dallas, Austin, Houston. Um, we had a really good conference, great experience over there, but felt like a change was needed for me. Um, had some talks with my family and friends and decided that, you know, I wanted to come back to Canada and play at home and have my family and friends all out to my games and supporting me. So coming back, I was already heavily recruited by like a lot of uh, schools in Canada, but one of my top schools, like when I was in high school was Guelph. Uh, one of my homies, Andrew Grant was going there. I'm from Scarborough, he's from Scarborough too. Um, so he's the first person to introduce me to golf. And then he had some of the coaches come out to my games in high school. But like I said, I ended up going down south. So I didn't really go over there. So coming back, hit up the coaches saying, hey, like, you know, I'm back in the loop. I'm thinking about transferring. Um, so I was talking with golf. And then one of my homies, Rashawn Brown, who played at New Mexico, New Mexico State University, was heading over to University of Manitoba. So he hollered at me, too. He's like, bro, come over here with me. He's like, we could do something. And then obviously out of province offers full scholarships. So when talking back to the Guelph, I'm very transparent. Like, you know, I like to keep people in the loop and not feel yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to go to you. Then I don't say that I'm going or I end up going. Sure. Um, so talking to the coaching staff, coaches, coach staff said to me, they're like, all right, like if you keep money aside from it, like, where would you want to be? And then I told them University of Guelph. And they said, you know, like, we're going to give you scholarship money. Like uh, the bursary people with you can help. And obviously with the help of OSAP, like you won't really have financial troubles. And if you do, um, there's a lot of jobs around campus they can help get you into, which they did. I was like a referee when I first came to Guelph. Um, so they got yeah, besides money, where do you want to be? So I said Guelph. And then, yeah, that's the, where I end up heading for the 2018 season. Um, aside from campus and basketball, what's your experience been like in the city of Guelph, coming from Scarborough, going to Texas, and then being back in a city like Guelph? It's not the biggest metropolitan. It's more suburban. Um, how was that 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 experience for you? Man, I loved it to be honest. Like, even as all my homies and my family, like I stay in Guelph. Like, you know, yeah. like I'm from Scarborough, obviously, but I stay in Guelph. All my homies know me like just for being in Guelph. Because like Guelph is really, really homey. Like yeah. there's a lot of students here, but it's a really like family type of town. Like I feel like a lot of families here. If you want to retire, you're probably gonna come out here uh to Guelph. So but it's the people here, very nice people. And like obviously a lot of people know me here from being on a team. And like Guelph is very in tune with the university. Like, you know, where obviously if you live in Toronto, it's like everybody kind of has like their own agenda. Yeah, yeah. And like town and this actual civilians of Guelph actually really tune in with the university. So I could be okay. walking around, and people know me from this playing ball. So yeah. it kind of, not to say it gives you like a celebrity status, but you feel like you're actually part of a university culture. Like, you know, yeah. um, which is like, that's what I wanted from the States like to happen over like a Canada. I wanted to keep that university culture where I know some people go to Ryerson and it kind of just feels like you're in Toronto. Like you don't really yeah. get that Ryerson University campus feeling or that like the whole place is just only about Ryerson. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, yeah, like a lot of opportunities here in Guelph, like with like training kids and stuff like that. A lot of kids will reach okay. out to, uh, to train and stuff like that. But I'll say like Guelph is like very, very homey. And obviously from coming from like, from Toronto, it's like, you kind of have to like always be on your toes when you're walking around and like going places where like Guelph, like you could leave your phone on the ground Go yeah. back there the next day and your phone's yeah. still to the same like class. someone will yeah. turn it in. My mom lost her driver's license uh, at one of my games, and I'm like, don't yeah. worry, like it's be the next day. So I went to the gym the next day and it was in there and I lost and found. Where Toronto, it's like they probably signed up already with yeah. every company with your driver's <laughs> license. Uh, so yeah, definitely the safety, the quietness, and uh, all the humbling people around here. That's good. Yeah, I've seen even in the malls there, you see like a lot of the G shirts, the Griffin shirts, and a lot of alumni around the city and stuff to, to yeah. support the university community, which is yeah. good, you know? Yeah. Even when I was on the Nighthawks, they had, like, my poster, like, in the mall. Yeah. I had people, like, take a picture, like, yo, dude, like, you're in the mall. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. What's it been like on the court playing at the um, the university there? 
Man, awesome. Like, like I said before in our previous talk before this, um, like we played in the best gym damn near yeah. in Canada. Like I'll say probably us or obviously UFT um have it, but I'm just gonna say like our gym because I'm a Griffin. We got a jumbo yeah. truck stuff. Like our gym is just ridiculous. So like when I'm playing on our home court, like I, I swear I feel like I have superpowers. Like I tell yeah. all the guys, and all the guys we feel like that. Like if we play somebody at home, like just know like it's gonna be a really good game if you're gonna come yeah. to our court. Like it's like our powers like activate and stuff like that. But the fans have been awesome. The coaching staff has been awesome. Uh, everybody just coming out to the games, hyping up the games and stuff like that. It's, it's been been incredible, like, all over these years. And like I said, like, people come to the games and after they'll randomly see, like, hey, I came to your game, like, you're a hell of a player, like, you know? So it's like, like, I don't really always do it for myself, but I want to do it for the people who are spending their money to buy a ticket to watch us play. Got to put on a show for them. Yeah. How have you found, as we talked earlier, that you're, you said you're reiterated, you're a student first and make decisions based on what the academics are looking like. How have you found balancing being um, a student athlete and maintaining um, your GPA? It's definitely, it's definitely challenging at times, but it just comes down to one thing, and it's it's just decision making. Um, everything you do in life is the decision. If you choose not to do your homework, you're probably not going to do your homework. Homework. If you choose to procrastinate, you're probably going to get your homework done late or like lack of quality of homework. So this year, like, not was I only in school. I wasn't only playing basketball. I was actually working. So I work. Uh, I'm, I'm the Tim Hortons baker. I'm oh, making okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that about me. So it's like I could have work like seven, seven a.m. to three p.m. was like my shift. So I'd have work yeah. seven day, seven a.m. to three p.m. I could then have team lift for weights at four p.m. to five p.m. And then I got practice six to eight. Yeah. And then I still might have to get shots up or ice up. And then I gotta yeah. go home and do homework. But yeah. some nights, some days were really, really long. But I just wanted to challenge myself this year and just like maximize my time. You know, like that's something you can't get back this time, but like it was tough at times, but I feel like if you just make the right decisions, you map out, you have a schedule. I have two calendars in my room to make sure I like everything's on point. And as long as you hold, hold yourself accountable, like it's not, it's not too bad. Um, obviously with yourself, you're statistically one of the better players, one of the better scorers in the country. Um, I was asking transparently, do you think that being at a school that hasn't gotten the playoff history or the playoff wins that you obviously would have wanted. Do you see that as a disadvantage in your, in your personal career? Um, so I guess what I'm asking is like being a scorer on a team that's not where they want to be. Have you found that you're getting less looks and less opportunities because of that? Um, of course, like anybody who's been on uh, necessarily a losing team record based off a yeah. record, you're not going to necessarily get the recognition uh, you may deserve. You're not really going to get the light in the conference and stuff like that because obviously it's like the goal of the sport is to win right yeah. so when you're not winning you're not necessarily going to be in the talks like you know yeah um so yeah i think my whole career like i kind of been looked out um because i've been at the university of Guelph. but like i said like my first two years here we made playoffs and this year was our first year not making playoffs yeah but yeah like you're gonna hear about the brocks you're gonna be hear about the max um the carltons because these guys have crazy records and obviously you're gonna look at their best player and be like boom yeah. like, that's the best player um we're like you know i just hold my hat on is like i came to guelph to try to change the program i could have joined all these other like great programs and my honestly decision coming back to canada is like i want to play ryerson i want to play carlton i want to play yeah. brock i want to yeah. play guys because that's honestly how good you're going to find out you are like you know and obviously this year it's like if you're one of the best players on the team the whole game plan of the game is to stop you so i, I personally think like from a score standpoint like it's actually a lot harder for me to score given that my team may not be as deep as others okay. have better yeah. record on winning yeah. game because now it's like you have a whole team focusing on me yeah. let's say scenario wise like you have a whole team focusing on me like, how am i supposed to get off or you have another team it's like if you try to focus on one guy you necessarily can't because they got four or five other threats or even eight yeah. other threats coming off the bench like you know um but definitely yeah like if you if you're on like not like a, a winning team necessarily you'll have some shade on you for sure what are some of the things that you learned from your professional experience with the um, Guelph Nighthawks that you've helped to kind of um, bring to your game today? Um, honestly, like I learned a lot from that experience. And it's just honestly, it's like acting and moving as a professional, like in universe, like build those qualities, build those attributes, which is like, I feel like it's always just handling your business and staying on top of things, whether it's stretching, whether it's physio, whether it's down to like preparation, like, you know, so I built myself like a really good 
routine this year in terms of like getting me game day ready and prepping just feeling good for every game and I feel like that's why I probably had like my best season of my career was this it's telling professionally like this is this is business I treat it as business this year we're like back before my previous season I just always just have fun with the game just went out and hooped where this year it's like not nah, like it's more strategic like you know like what's my routine before the game how am I mentally prepping for this game am I prepped for this game did I do enough like you know so it's like just taking those next extra steps and obviously like watching like a lot a lot of film and just being receptive to like what people say because feedback is good like if people are giving you feedback they're going to try to help you or maybe before I didn't really take feedback the best, where now it's like I'm like a sponge. Like I want to know a lot of feedback. Yeah. Like what do you think? What I could have did this. Like even so, one of my better games this year, I have 44 points. Um, I broke my school record for like points in a game, whatever. After the game, my coach comes up to me and he talks about my turnovers. I had nine turnovers that game, which obviously wow. is like is way too high. Yeah. But like it shows that like the focus, like my coach wanted me to have, and as a player, yeah. kind of being a professional, I could have been like, well, like I just have 44. We won the game. Yeah. Like, you know what? I was like, wow, like, you know what, coach, that's right. I got, got to clean up my turnovers. You know, I'm going to watch a lot yeah. of film, seeing where I had those, and hopefully adjust that for the next game. So definitely just being, like, mature, um, handling your business, and knowing your spots on the court, too. A lot of pros, they don't really do anything outside their body. If you're a shooter, you're going to shoot. If you're a big, yeah. you're going to get boards, box out. If you're a point guard, you're going to pass. So for me, it's like doing what I want to do every single night and kind of staying within that. I'll be honest, I don't, obviously I don't know you personally, but I can see uh, a maturation process because the first time I saw you, like I said, you're a, a young man that's suspended for a playoff game and to see what you've become over these past couple of years and the way you've matured, it, it's pretty admirable. Um, what I want to ask is how did the, how do you feel you matured during the, during the COVID phase or how did you use your time to mature and, and to better yourself um, during this phase, what did you do? Honestly, I just, I had, well, first of all, I read a book. Um, I don't really want to say the name because it's a yeah. first word name. Okay. Um, it was a very good book though. It's like actually like a bestseller. Yeah. Uh, I, I read a book and it's all about just like mental growth and this, how you view things, how you accept things and stuff like that. Yeah. So honestly, it was just about like, what was important to me? Like, you know, like when you're being immature, you're making bad decisions. It's like, Clearly, what was supposed to be important wasn't important. Yeah. Obviously, you have a cliche, like, keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. The main thing for me this year was to win. The main thing for me this year was to get better as a player, get better as a teammate, and just get better, like, as a person. Like, you know, I feel like that's what being cool is. Like, talking shit yeah. on the court, which I used to do a little bit. Obviously, a lot of players that used to play me, they could definitely say, like, you might have some back and forth during oh, the game. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, at times, like, it was distracting me from the game. Like, that's not what's yeah. important. I got to yeah. win this game. I got to be locked in where it's like, I was on the flip side this year where dudes is talking and talking shit to me and yeah. I'm literally not saying anything. And when I would yeah. win the game, like I felt so good about myself. Like not only did I not say anything back to you, I won the game. So now yeah. you're going to go home and be like, I was talking that's, shit. That's what speaks at the end of the day. Exactly. I wanted yeah. to let my, I wanted to let my game speak this year. So yeah. before I use my mouth to do the talking, not to say I didn't back it up. I had a lot of big games in my past, but this year I wanted to let my game speak. And I, I kept that the main goal. Nice. With that said, what are you hoping for for your for your next steps, um, basketball wise, career wise? Um, the goal right now is to head overseas. Uh, overseas usually starts around like late August, early September. Um, you usually head over there. So right now, like I'm just in the process of talking to some agents right now. Um, I have to pick an agent because I have like a couple of options. Um, so I'm just yeah. waiting out, talking to some guys and stuff like that. Um, but I'm hoping to make a decision um within April with my agent. And then from there, it's like, yeah, hopefully everyone can start watching me overseas for August, September. And that's the goal. That was why I was working so hard all over these years. Had a good season at Guelph. And I'm going to miss Guelph. Guelph will always be my second home. Uh, what the coaching staff and the community did for me, like build me as a person off the court, like we're talking about. And the beast they built on the court, like I'll forever be grateful. But now it's like all the little deposits I made over the years is finally going to pay off and hopefully get paid to do this in a couple months. What advice would you have for the, the younger kids growing up or even the younger Malcolm, that kid that first showed up at the university as well? Like, what, what advice would you have looking back? I'd say a couple of things. Like, number one, never compare yourself to anybody else. I feel like even I found myself at times like comparing myself to the Cadres, even the Ali Souls, Phil, maybe Phil Scrub. Like, you know, it's like you can't compare yourself to other athletes, like, you know, because they're all good in their own way and yeah. you're going to have a great player in your own way. So I just tell the younger guys, like, just look in the mirror and just want to be a better version of yourself year to year. 
Like, if you can look back and be like, I'm a better rebounder than last year, I'm a, I'm a better passer than last year, I'm a better scorer than last year, I'm way more efficient than last year, then you should hold your hat on that because you can only challenge yourself. And then it's like, like, work as hard as you can. Like, I look back, it's like, I would I didn't necessarily work as hard as I could in yeah. the past. Um, obviously, just being young, partying and stuff like that, you kind of get caught up with that stuff. Not to say I wasn't in the gym, but I definitely could have found more time to do more things that was going to benefit me long term. Yeah. Or this year, made that sacrifice to just stay in the gym, stay in the gym, stay in the gym. Even sometimes, like, I will go with my trainer. We'll shoot for, like, maybe 20 minutes, and I'm feeling good. So I told him, like, we're good. Because sometimes you can't overwork if you're in season. Yeah, you for don't sure, for sure. Muscles. Sometimes I'll just shoot 20 minutes and see the ball go in. I'm like, yo, I'm feeling good. Like, we can call it a day. So, yeah, just don't, don't, don't ever compare yourself to anybody else. Look yourself in the mirror and want to be a better version of yourself and maximize your potential. And number two, um, work as hard as you can because you can't get back time. So at the end of my career, I want to be like, yo, I gave it my all. And I wish everybody else who plays any type of sport, at the end of your career, however it goes left or right, you can be like, you know what? I gave it my all. And that's literally what I did here at the University of Guelph. Whether I made playoffs or not, I could hold my hat on. It's like, I gave these guys like my blood, sweat, and tears. Nice, man. That's good to hear. It's going to end up on some, some random questions. Um, with the NBA, what do you think about this, um, this play-in? Like, w- what's your opinion on it? I don't like the play-in. Yeah. Like, I feel like you work hard during the season to seal those one to eight spots in playoffs. Yeah. Um, so if you do a good job as a team to to achieve that goal, it's like, why should you still have to be in a play-in to sacrifice all the work like you did over the year? But obviously the NBA kind of keep it, like, you know how they change up the all-star game kind of around? Yeah. It looks like they're just trying out methods, I guess, that that work. Um, I'm, I'm still a fan of the NBA. I love watching the playoffs. Um, it does obviously create some type of, like, like tense environment. It's like, yeah. even if you're seven – seven through nine or whatever the case may be, seven to 10, it's like, yo, you're, you're not safe. So those playing games are definitely big games. Like, I feel like those are games that can create legacies for a lot of people. Like, you know, obviously with John Moran and Curry, Curry uh, last season in the yeah. play, it was a big game for him, like, you know, and then he went out and won a couple of games. But I'm not a big fan of it personally, but it's cool to watch as a fan. I think for me, it's tough to see a team that finished ninth or 10th have an opportunity to get into the playoffs. Yeah based on one game when you could be four or five games in 10th yeah. place. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I feel like at the same time, the NBA, like they're trying to maximize uh, money. Right. So it's like, if you have an extra couple of games, they're getting millions of dollars from them extra, sure. extra games. Like, you know, and people are definitely going to tap into the tournament. So you're going to make more money on that game than this is like a regular season game. So for them, yeah, it's just a little bit more uh, money in their pockets. I'll say too, from a business standpoint. Who's your favorite old school player and who's your favorite uh, new school player? We'll say old school is like 2005 before kind of thing. I'd say old school. I'll probably say, probably, probably say Allen Iverson. Obviously he's not okay. school, school, so he's still up there. Yeah. Um, to my guy, like, I didn't watch, I didn't watch too much of basketball, like growing up, like early. Oh, yeah. mm. like I guess I like, watched the Michael Jordans. I'm only born in 1997 as well. Okay. Um, so, like on 2000s, but AI, like this, yeah. you know, like this is heart, like, you know, like really heart over hype. Like, you know, like he's just, he's a dog. He went out there every game and just gave it his all. Like, you know, like left everything on the floor and like he had fun with it and he changed the game in a way too, right? But me growing up, I've always been a LeBron fan. Like where LeBron goes, I go. So, you know, me, I already put my little bread on Bet365 for Lakers to win a championship. Yeah. <laughs> my boy Brown going crazy this year. Um, but I'm definitely a LeBron fan, like, you know. My whole life, I've been a LeBron fan. So, yeah, definitely AI and LeBron. That's good to hear. How do you plan on using your major um, after basketball or in between basketball? How do you plan on using the marketing skill? So, I've been to, like, I go to, like, a couple of, like, random, like, networking events at my school where there's, like, a lot of business people uh, who are in the business commerce program and then alumni who are in the business program as well. So, I've met a lot of people through there. My coach has done like a great job networking me with a lot of business people as well. So I built I built a great uh, connection with the global sales leader at PepsiCo, nice. and they obviously own like Frito Lay's, Gatorade, um, everything. Pepsi, it's own, like crazy. I think it's like that Pepsi thing is crazy. Manufacturing in Canada, yeah. yeah. So he's like their global. Sales leader. He's a big guy, and the cool thing about him, fun fact, is that he actually played D one basketball and he oh. played overseas. Um, so he can kind of get the grind, and as well, he's black. It's obviously. Uh, a bit easier to relate to someone yeah. who like you in a sense, like, you know, I'm half white and half black. Yeah. I say like, I would be able to relate talking to a white person, but obviously yeah, sure. yeah. looking at someone who played basketball, they're black, they played yeah. overseas. 
now that we work in corporate, it's like, it's kind of like an older version of myself, like, you know, yeah. um, so I built a great connection with him and he actually wants me to join the sales team at PepsiCo wow. um, whenever I'm ready. And I told him like, I don't really want to jeopardize going corporate for playing overseas or jeopardize corporate early and having dreams I should have played overseas. And he told me, he's like, yo, go play overseas, get that experience. He's like, I'm always going to have a job for you. Yeah. He's like, you're a great kid. He's like, you're smart. He's like, I think you could be a great asset for our company. Um, so yeah, you're going to see me on the, the sales team for PepsiCo one day and then hopefully just continue to scale their company and just, you know, end up maybe like him, I may be the global sales leader one day. That's a good look, man. I really appreciate you doing this. If you could hang on for a few moments after I cut off, I'm just going to cut the uh, recording here. Um, and yeah, whoever made it to the end, thank you for watching. Hit the like. Um, I'm going to post Malcolm's um, Instagram and his contact stuff in the description. Um, if you want to follow him and, and keep up with him, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching. And I want to thank you as well just for having me out again. And uh, this interview is awesome. Thanks, man.